Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our stream road game. Up where we left off last time with our adventurers plus their hired help uh, traveling down into the depths of a cave in, in an attempt to discover what lies beneath the dwarven god statue. Pass back over to them and find out where we go next. Well, guys, I'm a little confused by drawings on wall, but as far as I can work out, these grunks all used to be the mercenaries, less froggy mercenaries, and we need to go and find the guy that did this to them. If we're looking at this correctly, we're going to have to go down to that other cave with all the goblins. Yes, goblins have apples. Magic apples. Grung making apples. apples. No, grung unmaking apples, I think. Not ungrung. I think if we can get apples for, for these uh, unfortunates, maybe we can get them back into their proper bodies. And, you know, maybe Blackfield Company owes us a favor, you know? So, you, you think so? So the question then becomes: Go look further into this place first. Do we go and deal with the goblins first? Hmm. Well, I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, a particularly beefy-looking frogman is blocking way deeper into cave. I think maybe, uh, given that we cannot talk to them. Uh, maybe we have to, uh, you know, do these guys' favor, clear up their little problem, and then maybe they will let us further inside, maybe. Perhaps even help us. Yeah. They might know the layout better than we can guess. Unless you've got some way of communicating with them. Oh, you mean the burly ones? No. I was thinking when we have the uh, apples and the Blackfield Warriors are unground, maybe uh, they could show us a bit more deeper in, given uh, they've been native for a while. Are all of the grung in this cave formerly of the Blackfield Company, or are some of them actual grung? I think it is just these three here. Shakes his head no. Uh, who are you saying no to? Myself or Yeka? Points to you. Are they all ex men of some description? Or were some of them made grung? From birth? No. He nods yes. No. What happens if they eat the apples? Nothing? Looks confused. <laughs> Say. Hey, uh, yeah, you're Mr. Not Mr. Uh, not Frogman. Um, you um, you think these uh, these grung will let us explore deeper inside or not? He nods. Yes. Hmm. Well, if they will, then maybe we should have a look around while we're here. Could be useful. How far mm. did you get before this whole this, this whole grunging happened? He points to the map of the that he's shown you of the area below, so maybe the fifth or sixth room. Is there something still in there that we need to watch out for? He again, points at the darkling elves. Mm. Mm. Any traps how, or anything? How deep does it go? Are there many more rooms? So his map finished after that point. Okay. I think it might be wise for us to get the apples first. Just in case this happens to us, we can rectify it immediately. 
Well, I think men who did this, magic men with Sphinx, they leave. They are not around anymore. It's not a big danger for us. So, uh, what are we do- what are we doing then? Are we gonna walk in a little bit, see what's going on, or risk our skin with an owl bear, or just see what happens? Well, we came here to investigate this cavern, and we are here. I think we should at least have a look inside. Yeah, I don't mind poking around as long as we're careful about it. Um, we seem welcome. I'll be honest, I'm all for helping these people as much as we can. But already only getting the twenty percent stake in this treasure. If we bring any more hands in, that's even less coin. Rose at this point is gonna look like perturbed, but still willing to let you on. Uh, Tia, I think you are overestimating their desperation to uh, win some treasure. I think if we offer them their real bodies back, they will be happy to let us uh, take their cat. Maybe as reward, huh? He does not. And besides, think of gratitude of Blackfield Company. It will be very valid. Well, I suppose. Have a point in that. It will be very va- valuable. Us magic apples, they're pretty valuable, surely, anyway. Yeah. In, for about a week, then the apples go bad. Yeah, maybe you can't. Not sure they'll be hanging around. Also, yeah, if you store them properly in straw, you can keep for a while. Yeah, make magic apple jam. Are these mm. apples that, that we need to collect, are they growing or are they just around? Like, is there a, a tree that is producing said fruit? He shrugs, sort of indicating that he doesn't know. Mm. Because we could be walking to that cave looking for a tree with these white apples and what we need to be looking for is a bushel. Whence the goblins, whence are the apples. Find the goblins, find the apples. Seems Save simple the enough. Save the world. <clears throat> So, shall we uh, venture deeper into this fearsome cave? I think we should probably, yeah. The way forward. Get some eyes on what we can can expect. Okay. Hey. Um, Before we do that, uh, Mr. Grung, I'm, I'm sure you have a better name to call you by, but... I'm going to gesture at the little pictographs all over the wall. Like, is this the extent of what you can do? Or can you write, can you, can you write in common? Like, words. He nods. I'll, um, go through my kit and I'll take out my, my scroll case with the star chart that I've been writing and kind of flip it over and just give him, like, some ink and the paper is like, why don't you write down exactly what it is that you've seen, what needs to be done to fix you, what's to be expected while we take a gander inside. Okay. Um, it takes him kind of 10 minutes, uh, but he writes you out a document that says, self and my compatriots were down here investigating it, or what was supposed to be a dragon crypt ventured into the caverns we encountered some kobolds who were less than happy to see, to see us there and very quickly moved past their room for they had a dragon they were keeping in a cage pushed further down into the cave 
leaning over, looking into the lower levels of the temple beneath. We saw a man conducting a transaction between dark elves and a a tattooed face fella in exchange for a a sphinx. Because they had plunged the area into such darkness, we used a light cantrip to illuminate it. He saw us and he cursed us to be frogs. Uh, We haven't been able to leave here for... We can't go more than a few hours without leaving the warder. While we were down there, we encountered a prisoner who explained that the goblins had been trading... or The the elves and the goblins had been trading apples with the magical power to, to remove curses. They want to try, see will it break whatever curse that has been placed upon them. Wow. That is pretty good explanation. <clears throat> that was very helpful. So these kobolds and this, this captured dragon still down there then. What's his head? How big is dragon? Uh, he moves his arms as wide as he can apart. I mean, relative to, you know, big dragon. He moves his hands as wide fa- as far apart as he can. Uh, so he's full grown dragon in there, in cage. I'm surprised it's still in the cage. Must be a pretty strong age. Did he say what color dragon it was? Uh, no. Uh, do you recall what color the dragon was? It points to the black drawings on the wall. <clears throat> black dragon. What do I know about black dragons? Or would I know anything? Give me a nature check. Nature. And they are evil and sadistic. I don't want to be tangled with no black dragon. And how, I, how strong is this cave? Okay. Yeah, that is my concern too, you see. Well, maybe we can avoid kobolds entirely. It seems like they manage. I have some concern. <clears throat> I mean, going yeah, down go in, into this cavern, uh, it, it's getting a little bit more sketchy than I previously expected. Yeah, we know the way out. You know, it is safe enough here. We can just go in. If it gets too dangerous, we can retreat tactically. Tactically. Tactically retreat. Tactically retreat. That is it. Oh. You're getting there with your English. Ah, well, none of you are going to learn Orkish, so. Come in now. Huh. <laughs> you butcher that like hog. But <laughs> I appreciate effort. Well, there's enough of your kind living to the east of here. Pick it up if you spend long enough in Spassgate. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll be nice. Maybe we'll be not so nice to others of my kind. You've come from the West. You're in for a culture shock. Yes, it has been uh, interesting traveling. But we must not get too distracted. We have cave full of fearsome monsters to battle. Earn glory. We do have a cave full of fearsome monsters to go and battle. Now, should we venture forth and do what it was that we were sent here to do? (laughs) Absolutely. If I recall, Thea, you're the only one of us that can't see in the dark. Yes, your little notation about Riling up these creatures as soon as light was produced is worrying. 
Ra won't be able to But see that was that, that, that was, was for the tattoo to elf. face, man. Yeah. yeah. There might still be a dark elf or two lurking around down there though. We know anything about these creatures? I mean, I've heard of drow, but these seem different. Hmm. I have never met drow. Or any of these dark elves, darklings, whatever you call them. But I'm sure they bleed and die like anything else, if need be, so... That was my thinking, really. Uh, I think we should be walking on eggshells anyway. Try to be as quiet as we can. Try to be as in the shadows as we can. Exactly. It's like recon mission. Of course, if us getting just past the mouth of this cave is any indication on how quiet we can be, I think me and Izzy are going to be a bit of a bother. Yeah. Well, I'm not discreet. Strip down and lighten your armor? Uh, I think it's maybe not Not wise. especially, if, no. <laughs> if things go bad, we will need. Yeah, I'm, I'm not inclined to do that. I think I'm we happy. just progress slowly, carefully, and, you know, we will see threats before maybe they see us. I'm happy to hang behind a little bit if uh, the quieter ones amongst us want to go ahead and scope out a bit further forward. I don't think any of us are particularly quiet. Except for oh, Thea. Well, turn to look to Thea. Well, well, but judge. she can't see in the dark. Well, as a mm. judge mouse, but... well, I've got a solution. She draws her sword and casts a light cantrip upon it. Well, they will see you coming, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. Puts it back in her sheet. Well, well, shall we? Let us go, then. Let us go. Get as far as she does. I will go last. Up to here, no, nothing really untoward has happened. Oh. Um, but around the corner, you can hear scurrying and voices yapping to back and forth to one another. Can we tell what language they're yapping? Does anybody speak Draconic? Not. I don't think so. No. Uh, Nia speaks Celestial. So it's enough that you'd know they're speaking Draconic, but not enough to be able to translate any of it. Well, I, we're I quietly whisper. Celestial too. Yeah, bad, bad things. <laughs> yeah, that's. I, I don't understand the language, but I can understand the connotation behind it. And I don't think we'll want to meet the speaker. Uh, you think is maybe kobolds? Could be the kobolds. We know that they're down here. Well. Kobolds, they scare easy, you know? They're a little pipsqueak. Yeah, but if we make How them... How is the voice? Not particularly more raspy than bassy. I'm afraid if we make the kobolds jump in, that might make the dragon jump in. And if the kobolds aren't there to keep the dragon tethered, I, I doubt there's a <coughs> keep it caged. Uh, I think is probably. Mm. 
Well, we will see. We can try and be sneaky, but I think if kobolds in fast room, we will have to fight kobolds. It's not so bad. I mean, maybe we can make a deal with the dragon. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, you you laugh, but these kobolds, worship it, it as they may be, they still have it in chains. Yeah, no deal you make with dragon will be in your favor. As long as I'm kept alive, that's in my favor. Mm, depends yeah, what we'll state you're see. kept alive in. <laughs> well, I suppose that's true. Well, lead way, Thea. Hey. She'll step forward, crouching down, fights across. Okay, well. Apparently she stretches herself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, can't see much from here. Do you want to come up behind me? Alright, yeah, he's gonna try. I'll check it. He is not very stealthy. I think this will be at disadvantage because armor. Twelve. Twelve is okay. You're still pretty far away. As you come up, you can hear the tiring going back and forth between two voices that seem to be arguing about something. They did that take a little blast, and a little hiss attached to the end of everything, but it's not. In a language you can pull words out of. It sounds like many small voices talking back and forth. And that's distracting. I'm gonna creep up behind Yaga. Well, as far as I can go. Also being stealthy. Uh, for a ten. And is still enough. Um, is he? Yeah, I'm gonna do the oh. same. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Clank, 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 clank. <laughs> so there's Drop a, shield on floor. There is a clang, <laughs> and the vo- the voices stop, and you hear the scuttling of feet moving. Are they moving towards us or away from us? Away. Yeah, well, maybe we should catch them before they fetch reinforcements. We could try. We've been making an awful lot of noise. Well, I, I know that that we already found out, but they don't exactly know where we are. Oh, how many of us? And. Yeah, that too, and whoever they're running to, if that is in fact what they're doing, they aren't aware that we're here yet. But yeah, if we but start when they come them, running back with more of them, we will yeah. have to fight more of them. We can fight them in two halves, it will be easier. Yeah, but if we well, chase them a- and catch them and make a whole bunch of ruckus doing that, that's going to attract whoever they're trying to get to help them. Yes, I'm but we can still fight kind of them. A, a catch twenty-two here. Uh, well, maybe we just keep advancing and see what happens. We still have easy way out. We can just cut and run. I, I think that would be the wiser decision. Mm-hmm. Well, you are wise, one Fulger. So, um, we just. No, no, we can. We we go on forward, but we go careful. Yeah, I, I don't think we should bomb rush this. Oh, that feels like a very bad idea. So I, I think just proceed as we have been and try to mind your armor and your your foot your footfalls. These these caverns are cramped. I'll do my best. When we get out of here, I have, I might have a solution that can help you. 
you wear chain mail, right? Yeah. You can take some time, but there's something about that. Let's move forward. Oh, yeah, fine. Okay. So she moves up. Back again. There's a camp a little further on. Skins and bones used to put it together, but I don't see anyone there. I want to move forward. He's only way. Then you first, dear all. All right, you are. He does his best sneak and moves forward. How good is his best sneak? 14. He's okay. So there's, there, there is now silence in the tunnel before you. Okay. Yep, I'm sneaking forward as well. Is it the same? <clears throat> I'm on be sneaky. Ooh. Oh man. I'm just I was a little bit louder than last time I got a nine. Uh with your nine hear the banging of drums. Sounds like one is tapping out a simple signal that's resonating off the sides of the caves. The earth starts to rattle a little bit and the bushes start twitching and moving. But nothing comes at you as yet. Well, they definitely know we are here. want to handle this? We going in guns blazing or are we going in to talk like we did with the ground? Went better than well, than expect. I think we have no particular quarrel with uh, kobolds, you know. We just need to inspect the cave. We can maybe go past them. We will see. But also, everyone be ready. On my signal, remember, we cut and run. What's the signal? I will scream like tiny girl. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's a pretty good signal. Yeah, okay. I remember that. I'm not going to forget that one. Given that we are not being sneaky anymore, maybe uh, biggest one should lead way. <laughs> he looks at you, Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I will. I mean, if, if we're gone in there, I mean, they know we're here. Yeah, they're, they're sounding the war drum. Should we just illuminate the chamber, make our presence known, and try to be diplomatic? That does sound like a good way to, to introduce ourselves. Yes. We will play nice and see what happens. Yeah, we'll One. draw her sword and bright light fills a 30-foot area. I mean, that is nice, but maybe not with the uh, sword. Is maybe a little threatening. Um, it does, I have torch. I, I, I have torch. <laughs> torch will be fine. Well, I, I could also... I can do the light cantrip, too. Don't forget. Oh, of course. I could just pick up a rock and, and we could just chuck the rock into the center and I can... Let's not be it. throwing stones at them before we've introduced ourselves. Well, no, I'll, I'll roll it into the center of the chamber. I'm not going to be throwing a rock directly at a cobalt's head if that's, you know, what we're expecting to find. Maybe cast on Izzy's armor will be nice effect. I was going to do that myself. Then we just, would have... Just a, to look stylish. A glowing, holy-looking paladin and someone else with a glow on holy looking blade I think they're just gonna perceive that as a threat uh, I think maybe not a blessing badly often 
they seem to be worshipping a black dragon. I doubt that they'll find this a blessing. Uh, I mean, you know, kobolds like dragons, this thing. Oh, Should we make you go? I'm less imposing, for sure. But also, I also like can trip on your top. I also don't want to be a beacon. I imagine from the next room, this must just look like a low-key light show. <laughs> <laughs> to be a beacon, you have to be high up, which you are certainly not. <sighs> I'm, I'm bending over, picking up a rock and casting the light cantrip on it. I mean, you could be a beacon for... Wolves. Maybe tiny ants? Okay, <laughs> maybe we should just go and talk to them. They must be rapidly thinking we are crazy. <laughs> now I'm yeah. rapidly thinking we are crazy. Oh no, we are definitely crazy. This is crazy. Am I leading the way? I think so. I'll be right behind you, Izzy. As you, as you wind your way around the corner, two kobolds standing, holding spears, look at you and go, hey! What do you want? Uh, I'm just Our having a look around. Ellen, you can't! A jig off! I'm gonna turn back to the other two. They don't seem especially receptive to visitors. Have you got any uh, thing to give them as a hello gift? Uh, to ingratiate ourselves somewhat? You've got Yaka's shinies! Gonna... Give us your shinies! I'm gonna Yaka's toss gonna my quickly rock into the room. Yeah, nice. Nice. Better than anything I've got. Dark one's away! Scrabble forward and kick up your rock off the floor, pocketing it, putting it, into, putting it into a bag, hunched over, looking at you curled up on himself. Hello? Who's here like the other ones? Are you going to. to here to steal the dragon? We're not here for any dragon. You can, you can keep the dragon. You with the tattooed man. We've only heard horror stories about that man. We have nothing to do with him. That's a trip, even. He's certainly not a friend of ours. Well, maybe you can help. Oh? Hooded figure comes up hunched. He pulls his hood down, just burns all down one half of his face. See areas of blackened skin where scales haven't come back through. He looks up at you from a snag lip with a missing tooth. Do you want to go down? I'll have to get past. But Get past us, you're just gonna run into you still then. Now, I have a proposition. You look like the adventuring type. Shiny armor, swords, and spell of magic. So, the Darklings have stolen so ball I've been tasked with ensuring his return though I don't think I'd be able to 
at my way through Orson. How about you do it for me? Do you think we could cut our way through his forces? Well, if you do, take whatever's in the rest of the temple. We just want the dragon back. Yeah. They've taken the dragon? Yeah. The Darklings trade in bare animal. They don't understand Uselbog is not an animal. He is a god. They broke his cage and brought him into the darkest corner of the darkness. Can't get it back. Now, they happen be Thieves have treasure. You go and get them for us. Take whatever treasure they have. Just leave Uselbog with us. How, how does a god become caged? And surely he, he's not in a cage anymore? Is only <laughs> but for generation. He'll need more before he becomes a true Arab. Is that for him. the ambition? <laughs> and he'll is What, what are the odds that if we do encounter Yusuf Park and defeat who you want us to defeat, that Yusuf Park will listen to us and be willing to find himself under your, your care? Yusuf Park will belongs with us. We cater to his need. Sure, he is clean, bad, rogue. So we won't face any resistance from him coming back here if we are freeing him from. His I have maybe captors. Proper respect. I have maybe idea. Maybe uh, since we have no experience with, uh, you know, handling dragons, and you obviously do, maybe we go in and we kill the thieves, have a look around, you know, make sure place is safe, and then you can go in and recover your dragon because he will know you and he will not trust us. And I do not want to get eaten by a dragon. I'm fine with that arrangement. Us. These darklings, they get around the white tree deep beneath the dragon temple. Now, evil things have come to this place since their arrival. Evil now, things like what? Ghosts and spectres. Undead. Ah, is this what uh, your friend meant by uh, the dark ones? What he means is you can't fight what you can't see. Their magics means no light works. You no. go do the fight for her. No light at all. Like, neither candle nor magic will work in the presence.
We aren't able to see those we don't know. Well, we can certainly try. But I will need your guarantee. The ones we've caught as prisoner. They, uh... They don't seem to have any magic, but they'll squeal like everything else does. If you get them, you can get them. You have one of, one of these opponents to you. You seal the the whisper. She has six or seven captured from their last raid. Six or seven of your people. Of the Darkling. All right. And who is this Usilda? She is our matriarch. Ah. And she is aware of our presence? No, but when you pass into her chambers, doing so by the first right turn when you pass the room with the page in it, Second, the, the second corridor is trapped, so you'll want to avoid it. At least it was before we were. Speak the word, Black Spain, and they'll know you were sent by allies. Very well. I will need your guarantee, though. If we are going to go in and fight your enemies for you, um, if we need to come back and, you know, retreat and res and respite, we will need your protection to do so. I assume we will have a an agreement there. I will not attempt to harm you on the way out. Gonna turn to SD and give it some regular. I think, strangely, we can trust this one. So, uh, which which way? The one, this one. Is that is that the path to the right? Straight down. He points down the corridor this way. Move into the crypt. The alchemist will have a key. Maybe you want to come introduce us to your boss lady? She might be grateful. You can open up the passageway. I will then come and assist. Well, I'm glad we could come to this understanding. Yes, I will look forward to returning with good news. There does oh. appear to be quite a number of kobolds in this As you pass through, you see many eyes glaring back, reflecting light off their, their surfaces, staring at you, watching you move. You hear a blade being sharpened in the dark. Uh, we didn't catch your name. I am Meepo, Keeper of the Dragon, once, now exile. But if you get my dragon back, then I will be exiled no more. With no disrespect, uh, Mr. Meepo, is this from dealings with the dragon or is this some kind of punishment for losing the dragon and clan I'm kind of doesn't gesturing need, at my own face clan doesn't need a dragon keeper 
the dragon is gone. Me and my friends here have lost our position in the tribe until his return. I can sympathize. It is not a nice feeling. Uh, I, I think we have an accord. In coffins in the center of the room below, there is an alchemist in home. Key is around his neck, and it will open up the gateway to the stairwell. Are we to expect any of these ghosts and ghoulies that you tell us are down in these crypts for More retrieving this key? It's been a while since I fought undead. Yeah, it seems like only about an hour ago. Well, this part of the world it tends to be fair and, and not, to, not to trifle too much with the dead. They're more interested in tampering with the living. Well, somebody planned on tampering with the living with the undead. I don't know how was a ogre zombie and those skeletons would have gotten here. Mm. Armon is on, probably on our tattooed man. Mm. This gentleman's just leaving chaos everywhere he go. I worry for his next host. But what exactly do you think he wants with think? I mean, I don't really know what the Sphinx is. He's big cat. What do you do with the Sphinx? Who knows? Probably the tattooed man. If the fairy tales are to be believed, like you play games of riddles in the whole court. I tend to believe in fairy tales. And that's... It about the extent that I know. You can use them to protect things that you want protecting. Use them puddles as a, a, a puzzles as a sort of lock and key. Oh. But it doesn't make a lot of sense. As you round your way out of the goblin camp, you crawl through tight enclosed spaces, maybe no more 20 inches across that you have to squeeze through before it opens back up again into an area that is clearly from the Undercity. It's cut stone that has been laid down with coffins that have been engraved with copper filigree. It's like at one point they have been oyster kind of town. You have two options to travel. You can head east or south. Where did that um, Meepo character? He said uh, Q was around the neck of Buried Man. Yeah, the uh, alchemist, I believe. Ah, I see graves. Who yep. remembers directions? I am so bad with them. We were told to take the first right past the room with the cage. I'm not seeing a cage yet. I guess I'm gonna, uh, I just gotta head further down. Let's kind of pick up one of the, the broken down bricks and see if it kind of wrote, like, if, if it's similar to the uh, the brickwork and statues from when we were above ground. Yes. It matches. It was dwarven cut, but it's very old. Technology that has been surpassed was used and not as precise and as uniform as all of the bricks that you would be producing now. Yeah, I, I think we're almost in relation to the statue from up above. This looks <laughs> very similar. Very old. Well, looks like we're in the right place. 
Okay. So, before we go any further, I will ask you guys to roll initiative for me. To start so our exploration turn. Um, Yak is going to move up to this first tomb and see if he can find an inscription on it or any indication that it might belong to an alchemist. Carved along the to- along the side of the tomb are several deep inscriptions that have been inlaid with copper. They, lie, they read, Here lies the bone of a beloved father, a man who got his Red from the sea. Uh, bread from sea is not what I would call alchemy. It's like Probably fishing. fishing. Yeah. yeah. It sounds more like a fisherman. Hmm. Well, not this one. Then I'll, I'll move forwards. Hey. Draw, draw his bow. And in there, K- keep on watch. Oh, did that just turn? That turned the lighting off. Uh, no, 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 no. Got the lighting. Okay, so you turn over, you look at the two coffins here. They've all got the same name attached to them. One is James O'Brien. And the other is Duncan O'Brien. Brothers held a secret, but the trade was building home. Hmm. Also sounds like not an alchemist. No luck here, guys. To find something at some point. Um, actually, can I squeeze past Izzy's over this way? Yeah, you can go past. Yeah, I'll come up and and kind of investigate this this coffin. Hey. I'm not touching it. I'm just like blowing off dust and looking for the written word. So as you blow the dust off, it comes up and creates a lot of motes in the air from the emitting from the stone that you carry. Twinkle down over the top of the coffin again, which reads, Merchant of the Est of Folk. Merchant of the Est of Folk. In which case, who are they? I don't know if I know. Here will pipe up. Estefolk is the dwarven hold. A few hundred miles to the west of here. So it's probably just a merchant. Are, are these like Sarkai? Dwarf size. They're they're oversized, but they're definitely dwarven creation. Okay. The bones need to be comfortable, don't they? You're very considerate. Well, no alchemists still. Are there any other rooms? I can see stairs going up over there and over there. He points. Maybe we should check those rooms first before we just count this as a loss. Oh, yeah. 
is in. Which Did way you want to have a go? Um, yeah. Which which stairs do we want to take first? Well, I don't know. Yeah, could be a better judge of that. Which way am I aiming, Yaka? Uh, it's hard to tell. I see some grave boxes over to left, and I see big stairs over to right. Eh. Okay. Sounds like big grave boxes. Could be where our alchemist is headed. Well, laying. Right? Which stairs would get me there? Or is that on this level? That way. He's he's pointing. Uh, you could go up, go up the stairs that Yekka is at the base of now. Okay. Let me please pass. Well, actually, no. Clang, squelch. Yeah. How much more movement? Come around and there are five coffins. Sorry, six coffins in this room. One of them is cracked. It looks like vines are weaving their way down. You feel cold tingle run up your fingers. I will uh, hiss down the stairs that there's there's five more up here and uh, it, it feels kind of there's, there's some magic effort or something. On guard, everyone. Quietly follow the dog with her. Um. Easy, give me a perception back. <clears throat> Sixteen. Something unusual on the far wall. It looks like the bricks are out of place. Does it look like they've been disturbed recently? They don't have the same pattern on them as the rest of the wall does. Okay. Well... Can I see the the top of the coffin next to me until... Are you going to go up the stairs to get there? Um, have I got... I don't think I've got enough movement left, or it's exploration. Okay. Uh, and yeah. you want to... Yeah, do you want to give up your turn to let Izzy move forward, or do you want to move? Um, come on. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let, let her do that. Okay, Izzy. And as full guy, you got anything you want to do? Um, I'm gonna just come up a little bit just to rejoin the group. Yeah, if if I can use my movement, I might just sort of move up behind where Izzy is. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll follow along for the rest of my movement. Let's get reading tunes. Hey. As you come up, reach over onto the, ta- onto the table. <laughs> there is a click. What do you do? Everybody, very quickly. Izzy, there's a click. Please. Hit the ground. Yeah, if I hear a click, I'm wedging myself into the corner I'm in. <laughs> okay, as the click goes off, hear the sound of stone scraping and you notice that the coffins are being disturbed uh, they're each starting to open and drop their goods long heavy foul smells fill the room 
followed by the sound of stone thunking on the ground before the appearance of the dead. They rise up, wearing once fine regalia, but now tattered rags. Fulgar, your turn, you are prone. I'm prone? The ground. I, I, I hit the I ground. Didn't. Yeah, I just wedged myself into the corner. I'm just trying to make myself smaller. Okay. Yekka is prone. Ulgar, it's your turn. Oh, we've got company. It's not the first skeleton that we've fought in the past couple of days. I'll walk up with my warhammer and just try to smash this one here. Hey, you cut, you turn around the creature, not entirely out of the, out of the coffin yet. You swing. Over and your your hammer coming down, a thirteen crashing against its side with enough of a blow that its head scarpers backwards off its neck. The creature twitching but longer. They're not that strong, fellas. Second one stands up, draws a short sword from its side. It glints in the light, still holding a shine all these years later. Trusts forward with the blade, catching Thea. Oh, at disadvantage. You're using dog's the using his reaction. Yeah, dog's going to use his reaction. Going to bark very loud at the skeleton. This is... Uh, Izzy. I'm going to come running down the stairs. Can I climb on top of this tomb? You have the movement. How high up is it? I've got uh, 10 feet more movement. Uh, so. yeah, it, give me an athletics check. Because it's quite high. You'd have, to, you'd have to jump and then pull yourself up. <laughs> yeah, 25. <laughs> 25, nice. Okay, and yeah, having having seen the uh, the bones of the first one, I'm going to try and take that one's head off and fail. Seven is too low. Yekka. All right, Yekka's going to stand up. And uh, how how high up is this ledge relative to where the skeleton is? Okay, ten feet to the floor, but another five feet for the coffin. Uh, but it would put right. you at level, because you've gone Fair up enough. again. You get me? There's a, there's a drop, yeah, yeah. but you're on the same level as he is, so it's just flat. But yeah, he's going to take a step to the right, get a good angle between Fulger and Izzy, and he's going to try and put an arrow in this skeleton's head. Ooh, 26. The six. arrow looses, it finds a, a lodge in the creature's head, it trashes the arrow stuck deep in, in the bone, this new sensation uncomfortable to it. Turns its gaze upon you, its empty eye socket staring knowingly. Yep. <laughs> Yekka's turn. Who is dead? Hey, uh, Nat, you know rogues run uh, Thea for me. Okay, she is going to draw her short sword and stab at this skeleton in front of her. Okay, she looks down, uh, looking weaving, taking it, taking the advantage to try and find an opening, which she does. Her sword comes up, twists. Something snaps, and there is a clank of metal hitting the ground as the skeleton falls backwards, destroyed almost entirely, though still twitching. It stands back up, its head now missing, but it's it's still swinging with its sword. The dog. The dog's gonna try and bite off one of its legs gonna nip in there a 15 that's enough so the dog comes down pulling on a femur that 
hugs away slowly, this dark purple energy seeping from the end of boat bones as it does so before he crunches it in in his mouth it turning to dust due to age but it's enough and it has to do the dc11 strength no, save will be not because it's dead oh yeah okay that will do but it normally would at full gar yeah i'm gonna i'm sure what like watch your back there there's a zombie in here I'm going to cast a sacred flame at it. So it's a DC 12 uh, dex check. Or dex save. Hey, dexterity. Uh, DC 12, right? Y- yeah. Oh, it passes its save. Okay. Watch your back there. The, I can't get a good angle on it. Sound of leather feet. Oh, sir. Another coffin open. Tud. Creature with a long apron wrapped around it rises out of tomb. Is he? Going to hop off the coffin. See these zombies. Um, going to bonus action. Actually, no. I'm just gonna. Is how high is the ledge up to this bit here? Can I just like walk you just, that? You can just go. Cool. Right. Let's. Let's see if I can hit this guy. I'm gonna slice at his head. Ah, oh. is eleven enough? Eleven hits. The creature riles back against your attack. No blood uh, coming out of its wounds. Its fu- its its vital functions have stopped, though it snarls and snaps its teeth at you. A glint of gold emits from its mouth. Creature dropping out, jingling coins sound as it pushes through. It falls off the ledge, hitting the, gra- hitting the ground in B position, standing up, swings over overarm with its hands. A vile, simple motion, not enough to get through or defensive. Oh, it is enough because she's got 14, 14 hits. Is bludgeoned by the meaty flesh of the creature. Yaka. All right. Yaka's going to draw another arrow into his bow and <clears throat> aiming at the zombie that's just thumped Thea. He's going to see if he can, you know, he's, he's aiming, aiming high in the chest, trying to like knock it back, you know, take it off balance. Um, is this high enough to get advantage from the high ground? Onto the zombie? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 19 for 7. The arrow hits, finding a, sp- a fleshy spot to go into. It's lost up to, up to the feather, deep into the, into the zombie's cavity. It's passed through at the collarbone into, into the core. And, all, and the creature seems to have lost use of one of its arms from the effect of blow. Yeah. Uh, she's gonna stab this zombie in front of her. And she drops gonna... attack, attacking with her sword, finding an area to open up, up a parry, cutting through, finding a spot. She doesn't get sneak, but it's, it's still a hard blow that takes the uh, takes the forearm off of the creature, but on its wounded side. Dog. All right, dog's gonna run up around and lean, sort of lean down with his jaws and just try and like rip the zombie's head off. It's a 22 for four. 22 hits, but you come away with just scalp and rot 
I need a constitution save, please. Uh oh. It's an 11. Us. And the zombie needs to do the DC 11 strength saving throw, will be not prepared. As the dog wrenches it with all its powerful neck muscles. It is knocked prone as the dog wrenches forward. So as the scalp comes off, the creature falls backwards with thud, wet sound against the concrete. Uh, Fulgar. Uh, I'm going to take my holy symbol on my free hand and toll the dead on that zombie, the one that Thea is fighting. So uh, DC 12 wisdom this time. That works for your damage. Ten, ten damage. Almost, but not quite enough. The zombie seems to be clutching at its at its head as as this resonating sound fills the room. Thick black vile runs from the orifice on its head, but it is not yet dead. Not pleasant. <laughs> Skeleton rounds the corner, taking the opportunity to draw its short bow and attack, shooting straight at the first thing it sees. Though its rushed assault means its aim is off and the arrow passes harmlessly to collide with the wall behind you. Bell zombie in front of Sophia swings its arms around, wildly flailing to trash against you, Bo. It's parried easily by its undepth attack. Another of the creatures comes, this time moving up, shooting the arrow at the celestial presence of our paladin. Whizzes through the air, but bounces harmlessly off your armor. Izzy. I am going to take the opportunity to try and axe undercut this guy after he tried Ever 11 again. <laughs> you come true, you inflict should be a fatal wound against a creature. It rocks and sways before eventually falling back into its tome this time on and pushes its way, sprinting at full force with a spear held between its arms to quite cover the distance. Zombie rising from its position provokes an opportunity attack from Thea and the dog She's if they want to use it. Well, of course they will. Thea, 24 for 6. Actually, for 12, because she gets sneak damage from dog. Enough that it destroys the creature. Yekka. Uh, right, Yekka doesn't have line of sight on these skeletons from here, so it's going to run up this way and squeeze. In fact, he's going to hop up onto this um, sarcophagus here. Do you want me to make an athletics check? No, that's a, that's a wall. No, you can't see it because Izzy is there, but. Uh, oh, right. Sorry. Oh, no, I, oh, wait, no yeah, sorry. That is a door. That is a door. You can go that way. Yeah, I'm going to squeeze past Izzy and climb climb up. Yeah. And then you can fire uh, down you... into the corridor that the skeleton is in if you want. Or... Yeah, that's what, I, what I'm hoping for. Uh, do you want an athletics check for jumping up there? Or... Yes, I do. Because you don't have a climb speed. 22. Yeah, that's fine. He's a skinny boy. And then, uh, yeah, whips another arrow out, spins around, draws a bead on this zombie as it, oh, skeleton, sorry. Sorry, skeleton, didn't mean to misundead you. Um, draw a bead on it as it comes rushing down the corridor and just kind of loose into the side of its head, hopefully. Jarrow leaves the clutches of Yekka's bow, passing through the air between it and the creature in a long, spiraling arc. It catches the creature high in the neck, knocking it backwards. Not enough to, not to kill it, but almost enough to destroy it. It is rocked 
by the blow and now appears to be badly wounded. Its movements impaired. Following the sound that's just happened, another creature dashes its full movement forward, readies an attack, glaring down from its unskinned face with a hint of malice. A Thea. Okay. Thea is going to dart forward and stab at this character sheet. Uh, stab at this skeleton with her short sword, aiming for the neck, trying to decapitate it. It's a 19 for 7. She ducks down, eventually finding the opportunity to take her attack, and it does remove the creature's head at its shoulders. It falls to the ground, its bones turn... shock. Then she's going to duck back behind this wall and take the hide bonus action. Uh, Stealth check, please. 25. Perfect. And Dog? Uh, Dog is going to run up along here. And can, he, can he reach the skeleton from up here? No, it's too high. Too high. Then to he'll down. jump down on top of it. Okay. And uh, I'm assuming he's going to try to take a bone because he's a dog. Oh, yeah. He's going to go for a rib this time. A 20 for three. So as he put as he pushes forward, the mass of the creature has to knock it back, and it is enough that the skeleton falls prone in front of him. Uh, he also inflicts points of pain, pulling away a single rib in the process. Fulgar. Yep, I'm gonna squeeze past there. I'll kind of come into the room a little bit. And I'm going to try Sacred Flame again on the skeleton that dog is chewing on. Try to help him break some more bones off. Okay. That is a wisdom save, right? Uh, Dex for Sacred Flame, I think. Let me double check it. Enough. Yep, he saves then. Okay. Uh, yeah, he will stand back up, which procs an opportunity attack. Dog will take, take it. it. Oh, no. Dog. No, dog has had a turn. Dog has had a turn. It's fine. And then... Yeah, he hasn't used it. A 12 for 5. That uh, hits. The dog is going. 12 hits. He does damage and he doesn't manage to. Oh, does manage to hit the dog back in return because dog is, tw- is 12. So how it goes, kind of, he pulls one of the hands off the skeleton. The skeleton now, handless, swings out with its short sword, catching the dog along the flank and opening up, opening up a long wound that runs from shoulder to ear. Uh, four points of piercing damage in the process. That zombie is dead. That skeleton is pushed this way. <coughs> and he's going to shoot down onto Fulgar, who is below it, so he gets make the attack uh, at advantage. No, disadvantage, because he's within five feet of Iaka and but Izzy. He is above he's it. No. But, well, so but not it would cancel out, so it would just no. be normal because he's in combat. If you're in combat with your target, oh, okay. is it is it only your yeah, target? Yeah, 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 fine, fine. I I will I will check. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, no, no, we'll 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 hand wave it for now. Let, let, yeah, we'll just, let it work. We'll do it as normal for a minute. It doesn't matter. He rolled a nine, so he missed. Uh, but I will come back and we'll check it another time. Is he? Uh, this guy, I'm I'm going log splitter on his head. Mm. Dead. Oh yeah, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Uh, that's a crit. And uh, you want to smite? No. Not quite enough to kill him. Then so you come up and you open him, up <laughs> like his sternum, and six or seven ribs break in the process. But the creature's still snarling at you. And. Uh, he is gone, he is gone. Yekka, let's back to you. All right, Yekka is going to drop his bow, whip out his scimitar, and in one smooth motion, withdrawing it, he's going to slash at the uh, skeleton that Izzy just uh, sort of hacked up. Okay, so following on from Izzy's attack, your blade swings true, and it's enough to do what our axe couldn't and fell the creature. 
Yeah. Draws you en- it draws enough attention that the skeleton on the other side drops his bow as well, attempts to cut you up. Swings high, finding an opening and, and getting through for a crit that inflicts five points of piercing damage. Yeah. Right. Dear, from her cunning hiding position, is going to sprint across this way, up here, and hop up on here as well, because she's stylish like that. And does she have a climb speed? No. Well, I'll make the athletics check for her, even though she's bad at it. No, it's an eight. So she can't get it done. <laughs> okay. So she's... She would end up here. Uh, give me an acrobatics to see does she keep her footing. Easy. This could be embarrassing. An 11. She keeps, it's a bad she, roll. She keeps her footing, but it costs her the rest of her movement. That's fair. Um, but then she's going to turn and arrange rapid. There's a short, a short bow. to drop her. Yeah, yeah. She'll she'll drop her short sword. She's 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 been taking a couple of hits. She doesn't really want to be on the front lines anymore. She's going to drop the short sword, draw the short bow, and take a shot at the uh, skeleton that's molesting Yaka. Okay. It is an eighteen for ten damage. That finds its home in the target, inflicting. A blunt attack to its head and it rocks to the side, now gaping hole in the creature's temple. This black ether seems to effervesce out of before it disappears into the air. The dog. Dog's gonna try and rip another arm off this skeleton. It's a 13 for three. Uh, it's advantage because it's prone. No, it's not prone. Oh, is it it's still not prone. It's not prone. It's not yeah, prone. I thought it stood back up. It stood back up. It's not knocked down this time because it gets 17 on its strength save, but it does still take the damage as more bones are being pulled away and crumbling in the creature's mouth. A full guard. Yep. I'm going to waltz up to this zombie and just say, go on, Shay, yeah, give the dog a bone, and I'm going to try to crumple its spine with the Warhammer. All right, go ahead. Attack. Ah, it's an eight though. Oh, no, you don't find you don't find an opening. It just manages to block you. Uh, the skeleton now surrounded but still raging swings its sword at the newest threat to arrive. It misses, getting nothing but air. Uh, Izzy. Moving through those skeletons, difficult terrain. Yes. Okay. Relax. I'm gonna try and finish this guy off. Okay, roll your attack. Go for the ankles. That is enough both ways, and you destroy the creature, cr- causing it to crumble back onto the ground as you take its legs out from beneath it. Uh, Yeka. All right, forward. Yeah, is going space. to draw another arrow, aim at this skeleton that's uh, wounded his dog that he's just not keen on. He's going to try and shoot it in the neck, take its head off. It's a 21 for 9. Room returns to silence after the last clattering of bones hits the ground. You have a chance to inspect your companion and see that you got away relatively scot-free. You have a moment to breed. Same. And next week, next episode of Rolled, where we venture further into the game. Like, comment, subscribe, and...